Forgebox Mods of the Week. This one, Brad gave a demo to uh, the Autos team last week, Java FX demo. So you want to oh. tell us about the cool stuff that you did here <laughs> and why people might care. Um, yeah, so Java FX is sort of Java's evolution of Swing, which is the way that Java developers used to make terrible-looking UIs back in the day. Um, it was part of Java 8, only to be ripped back out in Java 10 when Oracle moved into the whole Java modules uh, direction with the whole uh, Jigsaw project, which, I mean, makes sense. Um, and so, like, three years ago or so, at DevNexus, one of the keynotes was about using JavaFX to build, like, interactive three-dimensional um, representations of, uh, of um, spaceships in orbit and for NASA. Anyway, and I started to look into JavaFX, but then I had some questioning. I had some questions about how the licensing was going to go in the future. This was back when Oracle was changing up all for licensing, so I left it alone. Well, a few weeks ago, I was back at DevNexus. Uh, the same guys who did the NASA demo a few years ago now works for Johns Hopkins University, and he's still doing JavaFX stuff. And he's he was doing like three dimensional like scatter graphs, mapping like people's brain waves and stuff. It was pretty cool, and I was glad to see JavaFX is still out there. Um, and has the ability to look a little bit prettier than Swing did, which is always just ugly as sin. If you ever use like JMeter, like that's basically how most Java Swing apps used to look. Um, so anyway, uh, JavaFX is essentially a collection of you know modules for Java that let you build native apps for Mac, Windows, Linux, um, along the same lines of Electron, but instead of you know being based on Node, this one's based on Java. So I wanted to play around with it, and I wanted to get a proof of concept um, to say what would it look like to bundle a JavaFX, you know, native application uh, inside of Command Box. And so I found a cool little demo that has a bunch of charts. It's just a, a demo I found off the internet. And I created a simple module for Command Box, which if you'd like to test it, please do. Part of the goal of this was just to see if it worked on everybody's computer. Uh, so far, I've tested it on Mac, Windows, and Linux, and it seems to work. Uh, so JavaFX demo is the name of the package. You can install that module in the Command Box, and then it just creates a JavaFX hyphen demo command. You run that command, it'll download JDK 17, it'll download some jars for the demo. Um, and then if you're in luck, it should pop up just a regular, you know, GUI window that has this interactive chart you can click around. There's tabs, there's trees, there's charts. You can move the charts, zoom in and out. Um, and uh, in the future, we may look at doing some cool, you know, Command Box Pro uh, features. Imagine like server dashboards or, you know, Command Box configuration utilities that would sit on top of the CLI, but would be some sort of GUI. And so that's why I wanted to do a, a proof of concept and say, you know, how well does JavaFX work? What does it look like? How does it work? What would it take to be able to package it up, you know, and make it so you can just run a command and a GUI pops up um, and not use Node. So anyway, uh, that was it, basically. It was just my little kind of experimentation that I did after DevNexus. So um, if you're curious, just go install that JavaFX demo. It just runs an open source demo I found online. And uh, let me know if it works on your machine. Uh, if it doesn't work, let me know, because that's that's what I wanted to know is if, if if it was really stable anywhere or if it was, you know, full of bugs. It seems to work pretty good once I figured out how to call it, which is like takes about eight billion Java command line arguments because it's <laughs> Java. But anyway, um, I, I kind of like it. It's, uh, you know, it's not as popular as like, you know, Electron as far as just the size of the community, but there's quite a lot of libraries out there and. You can still just build like HTML, CSS, JavaScript interfaces and just package them up inside of JavaFX as the, the native runtime. And you can write mobile apps, which I didn't even realize. Uh, with Graal VM, you can compile native iOS and Android apps using JavaFX, which is kind of cool. Now, I don't relish the idea of building things in Java, um, but I am more familiar with the Java ecosystem as a, you know, a, a place to deploy things on, especially if I can use javascript and html inside of it but anyway that was my little demo um install it run it let me know if it works for you or if it doesn't and uh maybe someday uh in the future we'll actually build something on JavaFX and um make it be part of command box we'll see yeah cool i kind of want to throw something in it and just see if it sucks up memory like electron does <laughs> so i played around with it um is it as good as cf client nothing will ever be as good as cf client adam um I, uh, I did take a look at the memory, um, opening up this particular demo app, which had about like 20 charts. Uh, it used like 250 megs of RAM on my Windows 10 PC uh, for the Java process. And then if I clicked through like every single chart to load them all into memory, it used about 350 megs of RAM, maybe 300. So 
Anyway, I'm sure every app is different, but just for what it's worth. And that was not with any custom built uh, JRE because, you know, the whole Java is moved into this direction, which is kind of cool, but it's also annoying as crap where um, you can like build your own JRE that has like just the modules you want. Right. So instead of Java just being this big, like 200, 200 meg thing you install, but has all the crap over or not, you need it. You can use JLink and you can build your own, you know, custom JRE that only has the specific parts of Java your specific app needs which basically cold fusion servers will probably never be able to use this feature. But if you're in like native Java land, right? Forget about cold fusion. You can do that. And you can even like pull out all the classes in the JDK you're not even using. So if you're not using like concurrent hash map, right? Like that actual class file could just get removed from the JDK. And so Java has a bunch of cool tooling um, in the native Java world where you can, you know, build these like super small condensed, um, you know, distributions of Java. And then you can even compile them down natively with GraalVM. So there's probably some um, performance stuff to be had there. Um, it just kind of sucks that as a cold fusion developer, I basically that's all outside of the the bubble of what we can probably even tap into. Um, I mean, heck, they were talking about freaking Java 20 and Java 21 at Dev Nexus, and I'm still here waiting for Lucy or Adobe Cold Fusion to release a stable version of Cold Fusion that runs on Java 16, let alone Java 20. So uh, as usual, we are a few miles behind the curve uh, as far as Java goes. But anyway, uh, that's all a slightly separate rant. <laughs> yeah, well, the, their release system always threw me because don't the even numbers come out more often or something? Like they have, like the stable ones are the odds and then the, so every three months you get a new version of this, the, I don't know, it changes so I much. have I have no earthly clue. Because it went from like um, Java 8 being like, like five years and then 9 being what a, a little bit. And then it went to kind of skip 10 and went to 11 or whatever they did. And then 12, 13, 14 came out in a heartbeat and then 15. And you know, it's like they release one stable every, you know, every year, but they every quarter they release a new version or something. It's kind of crazy. And Adam's asking why they're both not on uh, 17. Well, didn't they just do some 17 stuff for that's, Adobe right that's now, a, right? That's a fantastic question, Adam. Um, so Adobe is going to support Java 17 with Adobe Cold Fusion 2023. Um, <clears throat> Lucy, more or less, from what I can tell, somewhat mostly works on Java 17 as of Lucy 5.3.10. Um, I don't really know where it's at as far as official support. Uh, you have to add like 11 billion JVM ARGs to make it work. Uh, all these Java opens. And the main thing is because in Java 16, all of those warnings you've been seeing since Java 11 in your console that say you have a legal reflective access, this will be removed in a later version. Well, Java 16 is that later version. And any any code inside of a Java module, um, which all the sections of a JDK are all modularized, um, any, any part of that that you try to call via reflection as of Java 16 now creates a straight up error like, nope, ain't going to do that. Um, and the only way to make it work is to have started the initial Java process with a special JVM arg, which won't freaking work on Java 8. Good luck being compatible all the way across that. Um, that's, that explicitly says the code in this Java module is open to this module to be able to call it via reflection. It's an absolute pain in the in the butt. Um, and so Cold Fusion, whether it's Lucy or Adobe, is like, all reflection behind the scenes. I mean, not all. Anytime you're dealing with Java objects. So, you know, you create an instance of a hash map directly and you're going to call a method on it. Boom, that's reflection. And that was a Java 16. Java's like, nope, you can't do that. So now you have to freaking start your server with a JVM arg that says, no, 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 really, let's allow us to do this. So a lot of the support, um, if only they had years and years of notice, uh, I put in the tickets for Java 16 support for both Lucy and Adobe. And you can look at the dates. Uh, they've been in there for a little while. Yeah, um, I mean, it's but, only released two years ago because six, that's 16 is when they started doing the more, right. You know, but Java more 11, Java 11 is when the warning started that said mm -hmm. this will go away in a future version. Yeah. So a, a lot of what it takes to make crap run on Java 17 is actually just starting the server with like all of these opens. Uh, but it's really annoying because there's no way to like dynamically do it at runtime. It has to be all the way back when the JVM starts. So if you have some crazy you know, part of a JDK that you call directly in your cold fusion code, it may or may not work on Java 17 and you may have to go edit your JVM marks. So um, on this topic, I think I mentioned this the other day, the bleeding edge build of command box and run bar and run war does work on Java 17. Um, 
which basically consisted of me creating this massive list of Java modules that I cram in as just a giant list of JVM args. Um, and it mostly seems to work until I find another missing JVM arg like next week that I'll have to go add. Uh, so if you want to test it, um, a command box, uh, the bleeding edge of, of uh, command box will support that. But yeah, it's uh, I, I love the fact that Oracle is modernizing Java. They're not afraid to do it. It's it sucks that it makes stuff not work. <laughs> and then, you know, we're stuck quite a ways behind. I mean, don't get, even get me started on the freaking Jakarta namespace for J2EE which neither Adobe nor Lucy even have an inkling of a care to even begin thinking about. And I, I've i been going without like Undertow updates for probably two years now because the, like Undertow is already cut over and all new you know, updates to Undertow go into the Jakarta version. They're not even, you know, adding anything over the bug fixes into the, uh, the Java X or whatever the crap build namespace is. Um, so yes, the, the extreme slowness of the CF engines to pick up like literally anything new constantly has me feeling like I'm in like the backwoods of the Java world. When I, you know, I go to a Java conference, I'm like, yeah, I'm still supporting Java 8, you know, and they're like, Java 21 is coming out next year. And I'm like, oh, wow, that would be nice to use. So, yeah. Yeah. Fun times. Actually, that'll be out. Java 21 will be out in September. Um, yeah. But just because, so, okay. yeah, they release them on six month cycles now. I'm looking at the list here. Right, right. And so basically the way it works is, yeah, like you said, 11 runs out um, of active support in September because that'll be five years wow. and then we have three more years of security support for it so at least there's security support for three more years but that means we're also almost two years into 17 so we'll only have three left before it ends active support again so if it takes them two years to get in they've got three years before they have to fix it you know so like it's gonna be a little trouble so yeah because the next uh stable's not gonna be coming out for a while so Anyway, but yeah, because it's been out for four and a half years now, the 11. So they're, they're up. If we go to 17, you know, say in a few months, they'll basically would be two years in. So we'll have three years more of active support and then three more security. But yeah, so, but yes, 18, you know, 18 and 19 or basically end every time there's a new version come out. So every fourth one, or well, yeah, they change the thing so much. But anyway, long story short, yep. Oh, <sighs> so maybe maybe someday I'll get to run my apps on Java 17 and the J Jakarta namespace. But until then, <laughs> yeah. I'll be a second class citizen of Java. <laughs> yep, exactly. So that was our Forgebox module of the week brought to you by Modernize or Die podcast, CFML News Edition, proudly sponsored by Order Solutions. You can see the new episodes every week on CFML News.modernizeordie.io or on the Order Solutions YouTube channel. 